Tropical Storm Elsa is making landfall in Taylor County, Florida. I'm Mike Naso with the latest video update. You can see this beautiful visible satellite of the United States. And obviously on the uh, southern portion of the United States, we have Elsa. Was a hurricane last night, then it got blown apart by wind shear, as you saw in that video update uh, around 11 o'clock last night, if you watched. And now it looks a bit better organized, and it's a strong tropical storm coming ashore in an uh, area there near the Steinhatchee River, Perry, uh, that area of the Big Bend of Florida, with some gusty winds and heavy rainfall. You can see there's the uh, visible, looks very well organized, at least as far as outflow is concerned. But you can see there's definitely wind shear still affecting it, which kept it from becoming a hurricane at landfall. Here's the latest as of 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Elsa was at 29.9 north, 83.6 west, moving north at 14. Uh, the winds were 65 miles per hour. We still do have tropical storm warnings in effect for the west coast of Florida, from Arapica to the Oaklockney River and the mouth of St. Mary's River, Georgia, to Little River Inlet, South Carolina. This is all with the expectation that the tropical storm will regain tropical storm strength somewhere up here uh, off the east coast. But again, by then, it could be uh, less tropical. It could be more cold core. Uh, the stronger winds away from the center, it could be more baroclinically influenced because it's going to be jettisoning on off. You could see Thursday, Friday, Saturday way up here. And so this is going to be a very fast motion, something Elsa was known for, if you recall its uh, days back in the Caribbean. We have a tropical storm watch north of Little River Inlet, South Carolina, to Sandy Hook, New Jersey, including Pamlico and Albemarle Sounds, Chesapeake Bay, and Delaware Bay south of Slaughter Beach. You guys are all under tropical storm watches. Again, it should move in your vicinity by Friday morning. Uh, the uh, track of the tropical storm, you can see it was a very fast west-northwest motion over water. However, the fast motion did not allow it to become stacked, and by the time it did become a hurricane, it was too late to strengthen any more, and uh, it weakened, and then it moved over Cuba, and by the time it became a hurricane again, it had wind shear here in the Gulf, so Elsa never really got above Category 1 strength. The pressure could never really fall. But let me tell you this. For a July, the first week of July, to have a long-tracked hurricane that impacts the Caribbean and the Gulf Coast of Florida... That might be a bad sign of things to come later this year. Here's the visible satellite, and you can see the, uh, the tropical storm bursting there as it moves inland. Remember, a lot of this onshore flow is where you'll have that water rise. I'll show you those uh, surge maps in just a little bit. Still some thunderstorms blowing off here south of Sanibel Island there in areas of southwest Florida. The uh, radar out of Tallahassee, the heaviest convection, uh, convective banding here is definitely uh, near where the center is. The center came ashore right here, and it's now moving inland. So again, Georgia, you guys are going to start getting some of that heavy rainfall, as well as areas of North Florida. You can see it even better there on the Tampa radar. It does have that hurricane shape to it, but it just never was able to get very well organized. Although about, uh, I'd say... 12, 18 hours ago, it was able to uh, close off an eye and an eye wall was starting to form, and that's when it became a hurricane, but that wind shear was just too much. Again, early July, you got to be in a really good environment like Hannah was last year to be able to intensify, and this thing never had a perfect environment at all. The storm surge, as I mentioned, uh, 2 to 4 feet in areas here of the Big Bend, still 1 to 3 feet in Tampa Bay where that onshore flow continues around the south side of the tropical storm. And as the system pulls on up, you'll have that flow here off the southeast coast of the U.S. pushing 1 to 2 feet of water rises along the Georgia and South Carolina coast. And we have those storm surge advisories out for those areas. Flooding is possible anywhere where the tropical cyclone moves here, areas of North Florida, Georgia, and southern South Carolina. But again, the rainfall threat will go all the way up the eastern seaboard. By Saturday morning up here in New England, you will have a risk of flooding. The key messages, number one, as Elsa moves across Florida today, heavy rainfall, considerable flash urban and isolated moderate river flooding are possible. And that heavy rain will spread across Georgia and the Carolinas all the way into Virginia, as mentioned before. And you could have considerable flooding in the low country of southeast Georgia and uh, South Carolina. 
Heavy rains across the northeast in New England Thursday into Friday. You could have flooding there as well. Two, there's still the threatening storm surge along the west coast of Florida. As I showed you before, four feet of water rise can still be very, very dangerous. Number three, the tropical storm conditions will continue across the Gulf Coast today. We just had a good wind gust. Uh, actually, the winds at Horseshoe Beach were sustained at 62, gusting almost to hurricane force, 71. And then at Cedar Key, uh, we had a sustained wind of 44 and a gust to 59. So we're getting pretty strong winds. It's a solid, strong tropical storm. Don't think that you won't have wind impacts. And number four, although the center of Elsa is expected to remain inland, tropical storm conditions are expected along much of Georgia, South Carolina coastline, even the mid-Atlantic by Thursday night or Friday. Elsa has been one heck of a storm. If we look at the track, you can see it started here about a week ago from this very well-organized tropical wave, and then you watch as it progressed all the way through the Windward Islands. It's a Category 1 hurricane, and then it just moved too fast, and it decoupled itself, and then by the time it organized, it was moving too fast again over Cuba, became a hurricane briefly there, and now has made landfall in areas of the Florida panhandle. So that'll do it right now on Elsa, making landfall in Florida. We'll keep an eye on the tropics. I'm Mike Naso. I'll talk to you guys next time.